Good evening and welcome to Real Talk on SABC3. The stage is yours. Later in the show, we have to discuss something like this. Is your partner controlling? Is every second word that comes out of their mouth a lie? Or has your partner broken your trust in such a way that you spend endless hours going through their messages, their emails, checking on social media, who liked their pictures, who didn't like their pictures? Well, we have some news for you. You may be in a toxic relationship a little later. Like I say, we're going to explore whether some of the behaviors we consider to be normal are actually toxic. But first, completely separate, completely isolated topic. He was the guy testing contestants' nerves as presenter of Fear Factor many moons ago. He also became the good-looking bodyguard, I think his name was Gabriel, who had a much talked about love affair with Karabo Morocco in generations. Since then, this business savvy uh, and his business savvy and passion for telling African stories has led to the birth of Easy Sunday Productions Plus. He's, uh, he's on a mission to get African stories out to the people through these innovative mobile cinemas. Please welcome again onto the show. He's an actor, he's a producer, he's a filmmaker, but I think most importantly, he really is such a nice guy. Uh, Sir Tapelo Mukwena. Oh, I called you Sir. Wow. It's the hat. Yeah, I'll keep <laughs> it, I'll keep it. I'm sleeping in the hat, oh. It is the hat. Thank you, man. So when I was talking about toxic relationships, we were like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I was just, I'm, I, was, I wanted to hear the end of that. Like, thank God I'm here for the top part. <laughs> You're like, I'll lead, I'll lead the way, but that's nothing to do with me. It's about to get heavy. <laughs> uh, Sunday is Mother's Day, and I know yes. that uh, obviously your wife is a mother, and you know, you, you that guy who, who, you know, you are the gesture, the gesture guy, like the grand ones, the small ones. Yeah. What are we planning? Sure. Now that you've brought it up, we need to plan. So you've done nothing. So I haven't had time <laughs> to really, <laughs> I haven't had time to really put work into it. Uh, I, I, I know myself. I'm a producer. So, you know, I know how to make things happen. Oh, okay. <laughs> with know, little? Short turnaround. With, with, and little time. And little time. Yeah. But uh, something needs to give. I'm definitely going to spend the day with mm. my birth mother. Yes. Um, I'll be with my wife for yeah. most of Mother's Day. I know she's going to want to see her mother as well. Oh, nice. And they're in different provinces. So okay. we always have to work it out. But it's a logistics nightmare. It's quite, it, it is, it is. Yeah. But something's going down. Okay. Something special. And, and look, presence. I think just being there, that's all our mothers really want. Mm. You know, that's all they want. Speaking of your birth mother, the tree that you mm. were born mm. next to, mm. apparently they cut it down. It's gone now. I'm distraught for you. I died for me. <laughs> did they, did they allow you to out. say goodbye? Mm. No. So I went home the one year and half of it was cut. Yeah. But it made sense. I was like, well, it is cold. It yeah. is winter. Yeah. And like Makaya, you know, so... I mean, people need to keep warm, right? So maybe look on the bright side. You know, you, the tree, your birth tree is keeping people, people warm. Then I came home like that December, and the tree was gone. And I was like, but say, yeah, she's a dream of it. And like, mm. what? <laughs> but the tree's gone. <laughs> the tree's gone. It's gone. Like, it's literally a stump. You know, I, you know, my prayers were that it stays. You know, at least I took my son there. I was about was to born, say, yeah. though, at least there was a moment there as well. Yeah, but it's, that space is still symbolic. Mm. What, my grandmother calls it Espedlela. It's our hospital, you know. Because that's, that's, where, that's you where you were born. That's where came about. That's where you were that's born. It. You know, th the reason, you know, we love having you here is because to me it's always fascinating that we've known you for so long and yet you've never left a bad taste in our mouths. I don't know how else to really? put this. Yes. That's great, man. You, it's, it's almost like you, you, and I mean, understand, I'm not, I'm not painting you as this martyr and this saint and you this person that does nothing wrong. Far from it. Yeah, yeah ex exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I just feel like you're... You, you plan your life quite well. Am I right in that? Or do you just, have you just been lucky and you stumble on things? Oh, no, no, it's far from luck. Nah. You know, I definitely know that it's not luck. But planning yeah. and just almost setting out and designing the life that you want mm. and going all out to pursue it. You know, we were talking earlier on before we got on the show with one of the guests that's coming up and we were talking about planning family. Yeah. Just the idea of planning when your next kid comes or when it all happens, just yeah. gives you so much control and so much stability. So I yeah. think I plan what I want, I, I, I pray and I design the kind of artistic journey that I want. Yeah. You know, I work hard, that's for sure. You know, and, I think, know this. <laughs> and I think a combination of these elements just make things work. Yeah. You know, I don't, you know, I get it wrong a lot of times, but I think I know what I want and I know who I want to be mm. in the entire ecosystem 
you know, as an artist, mm. firstly, mm. because um, that could blur a lot of things that need to show you the way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I don't know if it's planning, but like I'm just conscious of where I want to be. Because do you know why? There, mm. There's this notion that as as people in the creative side, mm. you know, of life, that it's 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 your heart and your passion that leads mm. you, right? <laughs> and I think it's such a dangerous thing, you know, to yeah. to, to 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 tell people and to teach people, and it's such a dangerous narrative yeah. because. As much as it's yes, it's artsy fartsy, there's numbers and bottom lines happening for that artsy fartsy to happen. You've nailed it. Right? That's it. So where's your balance in that? How are you still so creative, but you can still, you know, be, you know, the commander in chief there at Easy Sunday Productions yeah. and churn out the work that you do? Yeah. I'm just conscious of unguided passion. Uh huh. I'm very conscious of it because I've, I've seen so many examples of, of, of failed careers around me. <clears throat> excuse me, and not just as an actor, but just generally sports or football stars, you know, you name it. It's just, there's so many examples of things that went wrong. Yeah. That there's when no, they were going so when right. When they were going so right, yeah. you know, and, 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 and for me, it's just, um, my passion is there. And I've, and I've also figured out how to value my passion and my time mm. with my passion. So mm. everything comes at a value. Mm. There's a price for everything, and there's a value for everything. There's a value for being here right now yeah. on your show. And, and, and knowing that is understanding that there's a business to all of it. Yeah. There's an angle that needs to take care of a life and a, and, and, and a, and a career mm. and all of it. I'm just conscious and aware of it. I'm not like the most business savvy person, but I'm aware of my business as an artist yeah. in the arts uh -huh. so well. And right. naturally, what you like, you can get somebody else, somebody who's business savvy to partner up with you. Yes, or you can, yeah. you, well, that's, you know, um, Akino Matoso told me this a long time ago when yeah. I was um, forming my company. He said, do as much as you can on your own and introduce the people that you need as you can afford them. Yes. Which makes sense. Which does. Right? So like, in the, whilst you can do it yourself, do it yourself. You, and you kind of have to, yeah. right? Like, because that's maybe your season of sacrifice. Yeah. But when you can... As an artist, especially, you kind of have to design or build a team that needs to take care of what you're doing mm. and in turn take care of the, of the team. And know? to be fair, when you can do it yourself, when you hire someone else to do it, you can you see know. when they're not doing their job. You know. <laughs> you, know what they, you know when they're acting like they're doing stuff and they're not doing stuff because you've done that. You know? Right. You know, they say the best bosses are the ones who wear the overalls mm. at some point in their, in, in their career. Mm. So, yeah, you got to start and get dirty yourself to understand what it is. Mm. Or, or what game you in? I mean, this the worst thing would be uh, would be to be an artist in an industry that I do not know or understand. Yeah. You know, there's different climates. Yeah. I'm in the African climate, South African climate. Mm. Yes, I'm a global artist, mm -hmm. but I need to understand my climate as a South African artist, my climate as an African artist, my climate as a guy who's on a British drama series, or mm. you know. Mm. So 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 just. Involving yourself in the career m works, yeah. and I've seen it work, and I see it work for a few in the industry as well. So, so uh, how do you, when we're speaking value and price, because mm. another thing is, I can't come and be like, well, you paid Tapelo Mukena this much, so I want the same. Yeah, you that can't. doesn't exist. Impossible. You know, it's, it's, it, it goes like this in our industry. How do you decide on what your value and your price is when you are putting value and price yeah. on your head? Well, you can't take for granted experience. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Practice does make permanent. Mm. So the more you do something, the better you get at it. Uh -huh. And you cannot take for granted that I'm better than I was last year if I'm better than I was last year. Uh -huh. So the value also needs to communicate that. We live in the world of digital spaces and social media and whatnot and commu digital communities and digital influencing and so forth. Yes. Those numbers are business. That influence or that impact is business. So. Growing that impact means growing that business, for me. Yeah. That's how I see it. Yeah. You know, Steve Jobs at some point mentioned that if your business is not, um, it's not solid in a digital space, in the next couple of years, you might not have a business. Obsolete. Exactly. Yeah, obsolete. So, so for me, it's like, um, you know, I, I, I quantify my value based on my input and, and my weight mm. in this trade. It's all I have. I feel like amongst I'm, other things. I feel like I I'm know. watching a master class. <laughs> no, it's just like I think yeah. about this so much that, that I at times you wish you can share it. Yes. Because it works for me. I yeah. need to like, you know, 
12 years in the industry, I've never not worked. It makes, for me, it's always like, but it's people lose homes and yeah. things happen. It's just understanding the numbers of it and understanding what it is, mm. you know, and I feel sometimes misguided pa or unguided passion is, 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 the, is, beginning. is the beginning of, 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 of a slippery slope. That's it. Listen, I don't know. It's a masterclass for sure. I, I can imagine you sitting down like, no, no, <laughs> slow down. You're talking fast, Tabello. You're talking too fast. I just work here. <laughs> Remember, later in the show, we're going to get you to question whether or not the relationship that uh, you're in is toxic and that if you're currently in a toxic one, what are, what are the steps that you and your partner should take? More with Tabello and the masterclassness of it all after the break. <laughs> Welcome back here with Real Talk with me, Anne Doda on SABC3. As far as Tapelo Mugana's accolades are concerned, the man has definitely impressed. From sharing screen time with Idris Salba in Mandela Long Walk to Freedom to portraying the typical heartbreaker and the local film Mrs. Right Guy, that's notwithstanding the talent he injected into TV shows like High Rollers, Intersections, Ayeye, Broken Vows, and I'm just naming a few, literally, I'm just naming a few. Uh, our guest today uh, is Tapelo Mugwena. So you were supposed to get uh, a, can a show in a, can a role rather than a Canadian show, and you couldn't take it because you were cast in Generations. No, because I was on High Rollers. Was it High? Oh, time. that recent? Yeah, that recent. It happens. It's crazy. You uh. know, you win some, you lose some. It's, it's, it's the nature of my business. But that one cut me deep because I'm all about making movies. Yes. That's, that's my, that's the ultimate. When it comes to motion picture, uh. that's the ultimate translation. And not being able to do a movie, especially one that connects two different spheres, mm. is a bit of a, you know. Mm. But I go through it so much. It's like it's become part of the trade. You know, you kind of need to pick one and leave one. Mm. And you kind of hope while you're on one, you don't lose the one that you've really been praying for. Mm. But yeah, I think that's the most drastic. Mm. Otherwise, you know, I, I'm always lucky for productions to really fight for my time or, or vice versa, or have my productions understand what yeah. I'm trying to do and, yeah. you know, move things around. Yeah, but it's, it's part of the game. So is that the one that cuts the most deep? Are you even allowed to tell us the things that you've had to turn down? No, I don't think I am. <laughs> I've got a very cool campaign coming out, like something really, really phenomenal yeah. with the brand. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and, and it was a painful process because I had to let go of one to go with the one. But, mm. you know, I also pray that I make the right decisions at times, mm. but I really carefully go through everything and look through the, 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 the associations, the ideas that, I, that yeah. I partner with. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I can only hope that, you know, I'm, I've got my head on right to make the right decisions, but I haven't really lost something that maybe one or two yeah you know but yeah and is, is your philosophy one that if it came looking for me it means it knows where i live and it's gonna come find me again oh no I'll, I'll take it what is that i like that philosophy i believe that you I know like that. if I, I you know i also had to you know you turn down things that are yeah. so big and and you almost think to yourself, oh man, this is never gonna come again. But yeah, I just yeah. feel like, so that's the universe saying, so saying that is in your universe. Mm. And it's just gonna come back sooner or later. That's a good can. outlook. I can't say that I've seen it like that. For me, I always see it as, um, here's what happens yeah. with me. I lose something, yeah. and then a month down the line, something else comes up, and I realize why I had to lose that. It's always that that happens for me. So maybe okay. it's, it's exactly what you're it's saying exactly in a that. different way. Like, it always happens that something comes, like I'll lose a job, but I'll be free for the two weeks that I need to travel quickly to go to like a, a New York or yes. something. And yeah. I just have that gap and it's like, wow. There you go. I wouldn't have been able to go for this if it wasn't. So I don't really like fight it much, yeah. you know. Um, we always booked in advance, I suppose, from an acting point of view. Yeah. We always get a lot of bookings, you know. I've got, I've got work probably up until November comfortably you know Ooh, um you know yeah. which has always been the trend so i can always park the whole tv side of of my work you know my films mm. i've just finished an afrikaans film 
I saw it for the fir first time. Were you speaking days. Afrikaans in the film? One way, I would have never done it otherwise. <laughs> I was almost going to start speaking Afrikaans and then I realized it's a shallow I was, Yeah, me too. Okay, believe me that I too. <laughs> Mine too. I like say it's Belangra. Naturally. It's by throat or Bill. Oh, by a donkey, Tapelo. You should cast me the next one. We've got a voice note for you. Roll it, please. Tabello and Anele. Um, it's Lebakang here all the way from Pretoria. All I want to ask Tabello is, um, amongst all the roles that he has played, um, which one is his favorite role? Yeah, always the toughest question. Mm. Um, I choose my roles really well and, and, and I go for roles that I really want at that time. Mm. Mm. Um, so I really enjoy a lot of my roles. In fact, most of them, 99% mm. are really like great. But I really enjoyed the work we did with Ayeye. I felt, I felt it was, you know, a, a way of being true yeah. to the audiences. You know, we really embodied and owned the worlds. Mm. We weren't shy from language to expression. Um, so Ayeye, we were ourselves. We were ourselves. Yeah. Thank you, Anele. There I, you. I love that show. We just needed a cameo from you. <laughs> Next yeah. time, I hear it too. Do you know what I, know what I liked that, that show? Mm. Was because it was on trend. Yes. It was on point. Definitely. It was honest. And when I was in high school, I knew nothing about advertising. Yes. It wasn't even an option of a career, yes. right? Yes. And I know that there are many kids in schools cur currently who don't know that they can yeah. be a copywriter yeah. or a props manager yeah. or, do you or know like what I'm saying? Agency. Like yes. what is an they, agency. Yes, they don't yeah. know that yeah. and we don't know where adverts come yeah. from. So it introduced yeah. it to us in a very, so it was also educational. True story, so true story. That's why it like I was like, the whole world. Yeah. I have kids that bump into us and w walk up to me and say, I study advertising just purely yeah. because of that show. So Aye yeah. was definitely top of the, of the food chain for me. And, um, and, and I think also Long Walk to Freedom. Yeah. You know, here's a movie that I was cast on, uh, cast in for like a month. I was, I was in Cape Town for a month, if not yeah. a month and a half. Zero dialogue, the entire movie, because it's a story of Nelson Mandela and yeah. they've got the main characters of the film. But I've never appreciated being on a film so much the power of performance and the power of communication mm. is not in what you say. I used to wake up every day to go and sit. And say nothing. And just <laughs> show up and just go home at the end of the day and not say anything but perform the entire day. Yeah. You know, so that taught me a lot and I think it played a significant role. Idris Alba was right next to me, Fana Mukwena, Tony mm. Karoke. Oh, I just got goosebumps on that list of you names that I'm you saying? just mentioned. <laughs> yeah, right? So that's like any any coming of age actor's dream, to yeah. be amongst the best, you know, and, and, and to build those relationships. Yeah. It makes you feel like you're on the right track. Yeah, well, you are. Uh, next voice note, please. This is Eugene for, from Cape Town, and I have a question for Tabula Mugwena. Well, two, where on earth did you get that T-shirt? Because I want it. And two, um, what would he say the elements or the symptoms of misguided passion are especially wanting to be in the industry yo good questions yeah Who you should you? you should come and take my job that's I what you need to do look, she's, she's in trouble hey, look listen to that question i'm just like yo. looking for it like i should have <laughs> written that down did you, why did you write that for me <laughs> yeah. first things first you want first to know things first the t-shirt this t-shirt is a gift from an amazing rock star friend of mine francois van Koch. he's from that Fun, uh, uh the, the band where you can't mention police if yeah. The other stuff. And yeah. he was fantastic, isn't no, it? say. Yeah. So I've been saying to him, I, I shot a commercial with Francois a couple of years ago, um, ago for a cider brand, and we've been boys since. And I've been saying to him, bro, you need to send me the merch. I need some Afrikaans and, and this kind of um, sort of design on me. And he sent me a whole box three days ago. That's why I'm wearing it. It says, the world is mal. The world is mad. The world is mad. We agree, Francia. Yeah, I fully agree. So, um, second question is, how do how do I define misguided passion? Yes. Um, it's doing. It's going. It's going so far and all out, and not thinking about self as mm. an artist. Mm. It's it's doing so much, and 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 going out of your way to try and display. Um, um, dedication and, and, and commitment that you forget to take care of self. Uh. Now, to be an actor, you need to be in, in, in a good state of mind because you need to transport yourself yeah. from yourself into other spaces. You are the instrument. You're the instrument. So to be able to keep yourself well, 
healthy, fit. Those are things that, are, that need to be accessible, mm. but people tend to not worry about that. Ah, it's okay, just give me, pay me whatever. Mm. It's okay. Yes, I know you're not giving me my rate, but give me my rate tomorrow. Mm. You'll never get your rate. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it, I've, I've seen examples of it. Maybe I'm not explaining it too well, but it's always, it's people who go too far and not think about what it means or what the costs or the implications of going that far mm. are. And you sometimes know. the cost is your career, yeah. your health, that's it. your sanity, yeah. your energy, and ultimately your the, happiness. Growth, the growth of your talent. And that's it. Yeah. And it boils down to one unhappy individual a couple of years down, and that's not cool. I'm so sad that we're out of time, but I'm so glad that we had this catch-up. I'm catch -up. glad I came again. Uh, please give that <laughs> lovely wife of yours a kiss from the entire team. I will, I will. Uh, tell your mama Happy Mother's Day, tell your wife Happy Mother's Day, and tell your mother-in-law Happy Mother's Day. I will definitely, and your mother as well. And you, Happy Mother's Day. Thank you very much. As a mom that you are. Thank that you. was Tapelo Mugwena. After the break, we're asking, what is a toxic relationship, and should I find myself in one? How do I get out of it? That is all coming up next, right here on Real Talk. Welcome back to Real Talk on ACBC3, the stage is yours. According to Psychology Today, toxic relationships can be made up of poor choices, bad decisions, and wrong turns in life. These relationships are also made up of psychopaths or people with psychological conditions. So how do you know if you're in a toxic relationship? Are you or your partner causing the problem? And most importantly, how do you ensure that you get out of a toxic relationship safely? To help answer these questions and more is clinical psychologist, Crystal Ruth, who welcome you to the show. Thanks for having me, Anele. So, can you, in a, in a, in a less academic manner, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, just give us the definition of what a toxic relationship is? I think, first of all, a toxic relationship is whenever it's not good for one or both parties to mm. be in that relationship. So meaning you, it's depleting, it's mm. emotionally draining. Um, it takes a lot more from you than it actually gives back. Mm. So it, it just really can be a, a hassle mm. in a way. Mm. More than looking forward to seeing your partner, you're dreading uh. to, to maybe see them at times. Um, it's a relationship that goes from extremely high and, and being really excited and passionate to see each other and then it's all down there yeah. and everything's the worst, we're breaking up and, and we don't want to be together anymore. So there can be a difference then between a toxic relationship and, and just a dramatic one where let's say we both like drama, I like the fact that our life is eventful yeah. and you like it too, yeah. therefore it's not toxic, then we're fine, we're in something that we both like. I think though if it, if it doesn't consume you, if it's not affecting you emotionally, like you're worrying about your partner the whole time, you're scared, mm. you're worried, what if something happens, there's, not, there's maybe less uncertainty. Mm. So drama is okay. A lot mm. of people enjoy drama and, and function in drama, mm. but it's not necessarily harming you and how you feel about yourself, um, your self-esteem and okay. your self-worth, okay. that kind of thing. So can normal relationships, uh, me and my sister, me and my friend, me and my, my boss, can those become toxic relationships? I think any relationship can become toxic. It's so it's, it's friendships. Mm. I think it often happens in friendships. Mm. You often see it with parents as well, with their, mm. their children in families, um, among siblings, at the workplace, definitely. Mm. So it's, it's really any relationship where there's two people involved, mm. um, where one person is affecting the other. S -s now here's the thing with what you're saying. Therefore, the, something competitive mm. can, can, can also then turn over to become toxic. And yes. we don't see that it's become toxic because we're at work, so we thought we're just being competitive, yeah. but actually mm. I am in a toxic mm. um, you know, exchange with my, mm. with my colleagues. Mm. I think the minute that you, you kind of decide, well, I'll, I'll act or my behavior, I don't really care how it affects the other person, um, and, and so obviously if you are at work, you're yeah. not going to be considering your colleagues to the same extent that you would consider your, your spouse or yeah. your, your parents yeah. or family member. However, if it's to the extent that you, you don't really care about w how it's affecting other people, you'll, you'll step on whoever you need to, mm. to get where you, where you want to be, mm. then that, that is one of the ingredients definitely for a, a toxic relationship. 
So, I mean, you read lots of magazines and you'll hear lots of motivational speakers or people, you know, in, who just generally speaking, talk about how if you're not selfish um, and you're not looking after yourself, then, mm -hmm. you know, it, it means you're depleting yourself so mm -hmm. that others can benefit. And the first person you must look after is yourself, yourself, mm -hmm. yourself, yourself. Mm -hmm. So now, now we have to strike a balance, yeah. obviously, with yeah. what you're saying, right? It's, it's always about having a balance. So you need to, to not do that at the cost of other people. You can look after yourself without harming someone else or without having to make someone else feel really bad about themselves. Yeah. Um, it shouldn't be at anyone's cost. Mm. And I think that's, that's the thing with toxic relationships. It's about you and not, not keeping what's best for yeah. the relationship, whatever relationship that is, yeah. not keeping what's, what's best in mind for that relationship. Yeah. So you said three things earlier on. I'm going to go back to them. You said, uh, well, those three buzzwords that mm. I, you said uncertainty. Yes. Uh, because I feel people who are controlling thrive mm. on making you feel uncertain about mm. where you stand in their mm. lives so that you're constantly on your toes mm. uh, y y so that they have the control over you and then you said depleting yes and then you said exhausting right yes. so if i am sitting at home and i realize oh, oh, this is me mm. you know what what should be my immediate steps be i think though that that there's more to to those aspects so okay. it's if if you think about it being exhausting, um, obviously relationships are work. It's, yes. it's always hard work and you I'm have so to put things in. I'm so glad you said that because some people think, you know, you're going to get into a relationship yeah. then all, everything is going to be fine. No, no, that's when the work begins. So, so it's always going to be work and that's okay if it's, if it's tiresome or if that's what, what you're referring to if you say, I'm drained by this. Yeah. Um, because it takes a lot of us emotionally. However, when, when it's really affecting you to the extent where you, you're always worried about how that person will react. Mm. You always have to walk on eggshells and you always have to worry, will they be angry because I mm. said this? In what way are they gonna take this? Mm. Um, what are they gonna say about what I'm wearing? Because maybe the, the other person will think I'm actually trying to get other people's attention. So, so the uncertainty mm. comes in there and, and that can be exhausting for anyone. If you have to constantly be thinking about these things and mm. analyzing that, that's, that's too much for, for any individual to mm. have to do. A lot of uh, toxic relationships that end, and you, you know, then the friends feel like, oh, we can finally tell you, you know, mm. <laughs> we never liked that person for yeah. you. And you know, usually it's like, oh yeah, no, you know, Jared mm. was such a psychopath. Mm. Is, what is a psychopath? And why, why, why are we using that word so loosely when actually we yeah. don't know what a psychopath is? I think a psychopath is something, it's a word that we use very loosely. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and in, in fact, I think a narcissist and a psychopath is, is kind of used interchangeably, so people would refer to the one as the other. Mm. Um, I think, though, that the basis is that you, you're usually not thinking or considering anyone else. Mm. A psychopath has, and a narcissistic person has little empathy for anyone else. So they really just focus on what they need, um, what's best for them, what they need to get out of a relationship. And so that's why it's also so depleting because it's, mm. it's always you having to give. It's not, not then you getting anything from that relationship. Mm. So you kind of sacrifice your own needs for someone. Mm. Um, and, and a psychopath would be manip manipulative. They would lie. They would do whatever they, they mm. need to to get from you what they want. Mm. Um, and so the psycho is often then very, very toxic where someone would really hurt you. But then they would apologize for it. Mm. But it's not necessarily a sincere apology. It's more them. So, so let me fix this now I I so know that you, you need, calm. Yeah, I know you need this to, to be able to be OK. Mm. So um, I think there's, there's a, if we think about a psychopath, in, in essence, that should be someone who's more of a, a serial killer. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Not, not just a, a loose term of, um, well, my, my, my boyfriend's a psychopath because he, he hurts me by saying these things to me. Yeah. Um, that's, that's often more 
a narcissistic yeah. trait. And an emotionally as, abusive person. Yes, yes, yeah. definitely. I'm glad you, you cleared that up for us. Are you going to come back a little bit later? Uh, listen, as always, we'd love for you to join in the conversation. Send us your 20-second voice notes to the number that you see on the screen. Do you have a question for Crystal regarding your relationship? She's here to help. Like I say, she'll be back a little bit later on the show. On the other side of the break, we welcome back to Real Talk Martin Manamela as well as Dudu Sabati Madonzela. Welcome back. This is Real Talk on ACBC3. The stage is yours. We've gotten a little crash course in understanding the psychology of toxic relationships. But are there things we're doing every day in our relationships that we think are normal but are actually toxic? Let's find out as we welcome dating coach Dudu Tlawati Madonzela, as well as author and motivational speaker Martin Manamela. And I said to Dudu as she walked, and I'm like, you know, Dudu, your surname wasn't this long the last time you were here. And she's like, I got married over the weekend. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. All right, you didn't tell us you were engaged the last time, though. Serious? No. Oh, okay, no, yeah. A and also, you you were talking like one of those women who like, ah, you know, men, don't need men. Can't you? Can't you? Can't you? Here you are. I'm Beyonce. <laughs> Left us all on the dance floor screaming, single ladies, <laughs> Martin, I'm going to start with you. Yeah. You know, there are some couples who celebrate the fact that they never fight. Oh, we never fight at all. Everything's hunky-dory. We've never had a disagreement. You, mm. is, is this normal or is there like a ticking bomb? <laughs> I guess uh, it should be a ticking bomb. Mm. Uh, the reason being that uh, you guys... Obviously, when you get married, you're coming from two different, uh, you know, beliefs, yeah. two different uh, backgrounds. Obviously, you have different views about, about issues and life itself. Yeah. So if if you're definitely agreeing all the time, then somebody's not uh, being heard. Lying. Somebody's not being heard. Somebody's not being listened to, or somebody's not even thinking. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And you're so right because think about it. Even if you come from the same background, you know, in the same house, raised by the same parents. Siblings you hold different yeah. views. Yeah. I don't have the same views as my sisters. Uh -huh. And we literally used to, Disagree. down to eating the same things, mm -hmm. right? So you're very right about that. Did you say something on Twitter the other day about most women not understanding the value that they bring to your relationship, which is why they attract, you know, the broken men and the, ba and the bad relationships. Do you think that this then is the main contributor when you find yourself in a toxic relationship because you weren't aware of what your value was and, and mm -hmm. you, you're just happy to be there? So, you know, everyone who comes into your life is a mirror, is a reflection of your insecurities and the things that you actually value or, um, you know, you overlook about yourself. So when people find themselves in a toxic relationship, mm. yes, the other person is doing this and this and this and this, which is true. And, you know, like the, the psychologist before explained that some people are actually like, for example, narcissists, mm. you know, and they do mm. not know or cannot tell when they're hurting the other person. But you are in control of your life. Yeah. The extent that the person is allowed to hurt you is, is the power that you give that particular person. And most of the time when people find themselves in a toxic relationship, I always ask them, what is the void that person is fulfilling? Because mm. if you can understand that void, you can understand why you attract the people that you attract. So if you go back to the question about value, yeah. for example, if I might not understand my value, because of the fact that deep down inside, I feel like, you know what, I am not good enough. And we have to address where does that not good enough come from? You know, where does it stem from? You fix that. Yeah. You fix your value. You don't attract toxic partners. But is there a way to figure out that I have a void without being in a, in a relationship? Like, can I see that myself? Yeah, so that you, can do, missing? Yeah. you can do a friendship and a relationship audit. You can look at all your good friendships and relationships and your bad ones. There's a trend. If you don't have a trend in your life in terms of trend of lovers, you know, a type and so forth, I get worried about you. Because a healthy person generally looks for, sets a standard and generally looks for the same traits. Just like a person who actually is in a band mindset. mindset. Yeah. For example, people will always attract abusive lovers, yeah. either physically or verbally abusive. So if you do an audit, you know, I always say, ask yourself a couple of questions as to how did we meet? What made me attracted to this partner? How did it end? How did I feel about myself once the relationship was over? Once you actually understand that, then you can understand that, you know what, the mistakes that I keep making with friends, with lovers, is a reflection of my value. So for example, if people take me for granted, 
I'm giving too much. Why am I giving too much? Because I feel that I have to give more in order to be loved. I don't believe I'm naturally lovable. I have to actually convince people to love me. So I end up doing favors that are beyond what I should be doing yeah. for that particular person. Yeah. You're nodding a lot, and I like it when you nod, Martin, because <laughs> it means the heavens are about to open, and we're going to get us some wisdom. <laughs> no, look, uh, at the end of the day, when bef be the first thing that one needs to do before you get into in the re in a re any relationship, for that matter, is that uh, you need to know yourself first. Mm -hmm. We cannot talk about values until you know yourself. You cannot about talk about standards until mm -hmm. you know who you are. So before you could even check other relationships, Who's this person? Mm. Before you can even get into this relationship with this, this person, the question should always be, who is this person getting into the relationship? Not, not because sometimes we ask the second question, which is, who's this person that I'm that getting I'm, in? That I'm about to date. That no. I'm about to date. Or who's this person that I'm going to marry? Yeah. And you're forgetting this one. You know, that's why that person, you'll know that person so much and never know yourself. Mm. Mm. Therefore, that person will also, you know, may obvi obviously, you know, tell them, tell you about themselves and mm. stuff like that. And now you will not know your, 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 your limits. Mm. You, will not know, you will not know your needs, your wants, your preferences. You will not know all of this. So if you don't know all of that, then I'm going to give you mine. Mm. You're going to live my life. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's You're the void you were talking about. So if they find an empty room, they're going to park their they bed and they groceries and the furniture yeah. in there because you, you, the room was empty. You weren't using it because you were empty there. Yes, and, it's, uh, and, and you are lucky if the person is not conscious of the fact that they are fulfilling a certain void. But if yeah. you have actually people who are either trained at this or mm, are, yeah. are good at the game, you, they will actually identify that void and they will fill it. And depending on how toxic that person is in your life, they will fill it to their own uh, merit, yeah. not necessarily to yours. And you'll find that then they'll move everything out of your house, in the rooms that you already had that were filled, and then fill themselves in there as well. Yes, because, I mean, like I always say, do not allow people to live their best life at the expense of your happiness. Mm. And oh. that's what you're doing. You're allowing a toxic person to live their best life because you're just saying yes, 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 yes. Like he said, if you do not know your limits, who else is going to say, no, this is too Whoa. much on your behalf? You can never say no. Okay, so we've got a voice note, and I think it's a very important question. Please, can you roll it? Hi, my name is Mo. So I got out of a very toxic relationship uh, that lasted seven years long. It did a lot of damage to me, and I'm still learning my way out of it. So this all stemmed from how I was taught to be as a woman to a man. How do you unlearn that? I mean, it's, it's a very prominent role in your life. That's a very good question as well, right? Yeah. Because because of your, your the way you were raised, right? Mm. So you get out of it and you think, oh, well, I'm never going to do that again. But your DNA, you're constructed to love like this. So the very next person is going to be like that. Martin. True. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very painful to hear, you know, her saying, I, I've been taught on how to be a good woman or how to be a good woman to a man. Mm. So we, we uh, and, and this is why at the end of the day, we're talking about patriarchy so much. Yeah. Because, um, you know, I mean, right now we're talking about Mother's Day, but we know that a whole lot of mothers are broken. Yeah. Why are they broken is because they have always believed that they are not good enough until they know how to love a man better. Hmm. So, and, and, and that's why we, so many women celebrate marriage, because to them, marriage means I am better. I am worthy. I am somebody. Mm. I am worthy. I have fulfilled the task I was sent here to do. Exactly. So... That's why women, again, they think that they are, they are, they are baby-making machines. If we are married and you don't make ba babies, then you are useless, mm -hmm. you know. And that's why they will become enablers. Some of them, you are in, an, in a toxic relationship, but you become an enabler mm. of that toxic, to, uh, you know, the toxic relationship that is. Mm. Uh, how do you enable this is because, like earlier on, you know, my sister here said, talked about the fact that, you know what, you're allowing this, you're mm. giving room to it. You believe so much that, if I don't love this man, for example, who will love them? Because every, he's been rejected. So who will love them, you know? So let me just at least, he's got me, but he's yeah. abusing me at the same time. Secondly, you're looking at it and you're saying, uh, there's something that just, just, just I wanted to say quickly, and it's very, very, very important. But anyway, it, on top of this, ne, as yeah. an, on top of the fact that you, you enable, you're enabling the man, yeah. saying that if, if, if I don't love him, he, who will love him? Yeah. Who will love, you, you, you're not necessarily loving. You are feeling sorry. You're not even aware that you're feeling sorry for this person. 
and, and, and some of us, we have been so much in toxic relationship, like my sister yeah. say, to a point whereby right now, she may end up in, uh, being, being in a relationship where she's hoping for a better man. So now guess what? You are not in a relationship with this person. You are in a relationship with your with hope. The, with an idea of this person. With the hope. Okay, yeah. Martin, I want to go to an ad break. Uh, I, I'm dying to get your, 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 your <laughs> unpacking of this voice note. Hey. So when we come back, we'll roll the voice note again in case you've just tuned in and you don't know what this voice note was about. Uh, but it, 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 it'll blow your mind. It's almost time for us to wrap up our conversation. Uh, before we do, Martin Manamela considers himself the doctor of love out here. And he wants to spread a little love with you. It is Mother's Day, like he's just spoken about. It's coming this weekend. So why not spoil your mom with a two-night getaway at the Indaba Hotel in Johannesburg? All you have to do is go onto his Twitter page. We showed you uh, his, his, his handle. And tell him what you cherish most about your mom. And if that person you cherish the most happens to be your aunt or your granny, your older sister, somebody who's a mother figure to you, we welcome, more than welcome, to speak about them. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Real Talk on SABC3. The stage is yours. It was American author Shahida Arabi who wrote, when you notice someone does something toxic the first time, don't wait for the second time before you address it or cut them off. Earlier today, we put up a Twitter poll asking you, what is the best thing to do when you find out you're in a toxic relationship? Over 70% of you said you should just pack and leave. Uh, it's time to get one final word from our guest. Crystal Roots is back. Martin Manemela is still here, as well as Dudu Shabati Matonzela. We had a voice note. Martin's already weighed in. I want to play the voice note again in case you've just tuned in, just so we're on par, you know where we are in life. Please roll it. Hi, my name is Mo. So I got out of a very toxic relationship uh, that lasted seven years long. It did a lot of damage to me and I'm still learning my way out of it. So this all stemmed from how I was taught to be as a woman to a man. How do you unlearn that? I mean, it's it's a very prominent role in your life. Do do. Okay, I'm going to say this as a fellow female. There's what the book says and there's practicality. Mm. Practicality is you have to be brave. You know, we live in a society that is very judgmental and has high expectations, not only men, but other women too, mm. as to how you should behave as a woman and how you should actually uh, uh, express your lang language of love. Mm. You actually have to throw caution to the wind and say, this is me, this is the person that I am. But you have to stick to your principles. That's mm. what you have to do. In order for the other person to take you seriously, you actually have to get mm. to a point where you say, this is how I do it. Mm. These, I mean, there's various ways which you can take the soft approach, but actually the best approach is just to be brave and say, society says I must love like this, yeah. but I'm going to love like this. Whether I, f I find a mother-in-law or not one yeah. day. And it's fine. If yeah. it, 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 it didn't work this way. So perhaps be extreme the other way. Uh, Crystal? I think the, the most important thing is for you to... Your relationship with yourself. Uh -huh. um, and, and as she asked, how do you move on? And how do you change that, that pattern that's been there? Mm -hmm. It's important that you have a relationship with yourself that's actually healthy. And, and as Dudu said, where if a boundary is, is broken, that you can address it as and when it happens and then say, well, it's okay for me to say that this is wrong. Yeah. Because a lot of times, especially in toxic relationships, you doubt yourself. You doubt if, if is it wrong for me to not want to do this? Is yeah. it wrong for me? Because the person would always put that responsibility on you. Yeah. So you are making me feel this way and, and it's wrong for you to not want to do this for me or cook for me or whatever yeah. it is that they would expect because they would put that on you. And, and it's really important to get past that yeah. where you can say, I have my boundaries, yeah. I have a good relationship with myself yeah. and I can distance myself. I'm not just gonna take ev everything that you throw at me yeah. um, and accept responsibility for that. And when you're not operating from the fear of being alone, you make better decisions yeah. for yourself. Uh, Martin, I wanted to talk money, but I've just gotten a voice note that came through and I feel that it's important that we, we answer this one. Please roll it. Hello. Just wanted to find out what does a person do when his wife is cheating with someone online for years and we've been married for 20 years. Do I let her go? Do I divorce her? 
if she doesn't want to change and leave this person or even consider counseling? Well, the first thing is counseling. Um, I can never advise anybody. We can, we, we can never advise people on what to do. We don't tell them what to do, mm. but you need to find out from him. Like for right now, with the question, what is it that he wants? You know, and how, how much does he value himself? What are the risks involved? You need to make them aware of a whole lot of other risks. There's sicknesses out there. There's just so many things that you can look into to make a, a well-informed decision. Mm. Right now, it's a one-sided story, number one. Number two, we don't know all the, 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 uh, the, 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 the history, mm. you know, the, the whole history, where they come from in these 20 years, what has happened in these 20 years. So, so I can sit here now and say, wow, shame, he's been cheated. But what if he's, he also cheated before, uh -huh. and this is a retaliation? So we need the whole story before we can give an advice. Mm. So, so we cannot just jump into a, a decision right just like that, or advice just like that. But we ne that's why I'm saying counseling will be key for him mm. in order for, for, them to, for both of them to put their story on the table. Yeah. That's when we're gonna find out. Maybe he's saying he's cheating, but maybe it's just jealousy. Okay. What if he, I, have a, I just have a good friend? You understand? Yeah. So there's just so many ways. But that man sounds like he's being cheated on. Like, <laughs> ah, no, no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that we need to yeah. look into a whole lot of deep, like d re reasons upon reasons, mm. and as to why this thing. I'm not saying that uh, at the same time where whether he's cheated in in the past give a Gives reason. Give her the right you to know, cheat. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's not. But you would know. If you want to stay in a relationship, it starts with who are you again? Mm -hmm. Goes back there. What is it that you want? Limits that we spoke about, needs, pr mm -hmm. uh, preferences, values. All of this is, comes to play when you make one simple decision. Guys, it is 7 o'clock. Uh, that means we're out of time. Crystal, thank you for your time. Uh, Mrs. Eh? Makoti, Aili Lili, thank you for your time. <laughs> Martin, thanks for your time as well. Uh, once again, thank you to our guests. They are Martin Manamela, Dudu Tlabati Matontela, Crystal Roots, and earlier on it was Tapela Mukwena. Tomorrow, we are in the company of revered journalist whose life experience has been split in South Africa and Iran. She's just released a memoir detailing fascinating facts about her journey. Uh, if you can guess what I'm talking about, hmm? Uh, then log on to at Real Talk at 3, as well as our Facebook page for clues to find out who will be on the couch tomorrow. Isidingo is up next. We'll see you at 6 p.m. on Friday.